so very good morning good morning good evening guys uh, and let's continue with the next part uh, next portion right uh, today would be the last day for this program and uh, uh, multiple things we have already covered some more very interesting concepts practicals very interesting use cases yet to be covered today and we will cover it right so uh, let's continue with the next part nothing much to summarize we have done multiple things already a lot more thing to do today so uh, i would like to directly jump to the practicals and the hands on right so this was for portions every portion um, or every topic i can say uh, today is uh, going to is is solving some particular uh, use case or some particular requirement right uh so let pick let me pick one by one to explain you the concept right so i'm sharing my screen uh and uh, and let's continue with uh step by step what exactly we would like to do today right um so first thing is a very simple uh concept but very much required almost in all the main area so i did something like this even though let's just start building right uh, rather than i draw here let's start building so you guys understood what is going on let's just save also our time so i'm using git viz uh, program here so we can do a live tracking right at the same time what we have uh, what we was doing in the last class and also you let me use git bash to uh, create something okay so what is the idea uh, i'll go to our get uh, work uh, shop folder get workspace workshop folder and um, uh, what i'm going to do right now so guys i already shared my screen i don't know why it is not visible to everyone let me reshare it okay so guys if you can confirm uh, now my screen is visible yeah this this now is right okay uh, so um, this is the uh, you know workspace we have let me initialize new project and uh, uh, let, let's do some okay let's let me first complete this small portion right then i have some very interesting uh, practical use case to perform where you guys can also work together with me as a team right we'll do something on the github as a team you guys can also contribute and we'll do create some kind of team on the top of github we'll we'll see how it will work right so let me initialize very quickly new project the projects we have so get initialize every folder is like a project so i'm just unless i get uh, ws20 project right is a folder name or a repository or a project and uh, what i'm going to do also let me take a live tracking or visual of this particular uh, this particular let me first pick workspace git 20 and the thing is here because i haven't commented yet anything uh, so what i'm doing uh what i'm doing i'll just create a new file okay uh let's say file name is a get add dot get commit dot first commit and that's all so this is done master has committed something and, and let's say let me do one more time uh, b get add uh, adding the staging area again commit so this is done by master again and let's say after this e7 de commit uh, let's say this this part is done and uh, we we push this data into production system with the help of jenkins and some kind of ci cd tools everything working fine but we have to add a more feature adding a new feature add new data we normally create a new branch let's say dev one uh, branch and this guy uh, again add some new file or some new data add this particular data 
uh, dot and commit also over here in their respective branch with D1 commit. So this is working uh, fine. Let me do this. So, so I'm just revising the concept also, plus I'm doing this thing intentionally. So I'm just trying to create some you know, example over here so that uh, I can show you uh, some interesting concept. So this is a one more uh, commit Devon has done. Let me do one more to so can see a very quick interesting practical over here. And this would be let's say D3. <clears throat> so this is the guys current hierarchy we have. Okay. And let's say Devon is still working. Last commit is four E. This is the last commit of Dev1, right? Uh, even though let me do half a screen given to this person. So this is the last commit by Dev1, but Dev1 is still working. Uh, the feature is not yet completed. So there's no meaning to merge back into the master, right? All the feature this Dev1 has built. But at the same time, at the same time, it is also possible that somebody in the master finds some issues and they quickly want to resolve on the file inside the master. Okay, they have some issues, they want to resolve it. Okay. And they can't wait to create a new branch and, uh, and uh, to resolve and merge back. So they quickly find a very quick, quick issue and they would like to solve in the master. Or maybe somebody might not follow the good practice and what they do, they start working on the master. Typically, the uh, good practice is always create an, an X branch, work there and the merge back, right? But maybe somebody is, is not following this practice and they say they create one new file, let's say m1.txt directly on the master branch. See here, I am in the master branch. Head is also there in the master branch to, to, to tell you where we are right now at this point in time. And again, same thing, we they add this. All right, they comment this so we can provide this data to our person environment as a master new uh, commit we have done okay now in this case uh, in this case we see uh, f6ce is being uh, added by a master okay as a new feature maybe some new file they have to create or some changes what uh, initially we forgot and this very critical quickly master guys has has done this, right? In this case, master is one, uh, uh, you know, one uh, commit ahead of Devon and Devon has a different line going on, right? Is a, is a different, uh, you know, tree, different, different, you know, direction or different path or, uh, you know, timeline is going on in day one, right? So, you know, what I'm talking about finally by looking at this diagram. So my, my history of the commit, Okay, my history of the commit, uh, in this case, normally the history look like this. We have first commit, then second commit, and third commit, and fourth commit, fifth commit. Uh, mostly you will see uh, history look very straight, that's called linear. But this is one of the example where you have one uh, line going this side, one line going this side, or one path going this side. So typically this example of non-linear, okay? And challenge in the low near, linear is okay, in the terms of management, right? It's very harder uh, to, to cop up or to understand, right? Because this guy added three new commits. This guy has one new commit. Obviously the base commit is this two. Everybody has same, same data till here. But after this master has added something, after this dev one added something. Uh, so harder to understand which one to pick. But in this use case, in the use case, dev1 is working on uh, as a branch for the master, but they are still working. The, 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 the working uh, job is not yet completed, but master also have behind the scene uh, committed something. Okay. And maybe this commit water master change might impact their, their work. Okay. Or maybe a uh, master added something or this something developer need to know what things the master change behind the scenes so they can accordingly they can write further code. Okay, see any of this constant, uh, maybe uh, my, my simple point is in this point, what are the master change 
I want to provide this information to day one. That's what the, the plan is. Means if you go to, uh, if you go to uh, check out day one and see the history of day one, uh, even though you can see from visuals also, but in the dev one, they have no idea what new thing master one has added. Even though if you LS also, they have no idea new file or new data has been added. Okay, they only know till E7. After E7, they start working on 0046 and 4E in this area. But behind the scene, master has updated something. And because dev one is in their need to add new feature or because master has something in the behind the scene. So the possibility is, uh, if dev one doesn't know about what master has committed, okay, their, their feature, what they're adding might be impacted. Okay. So if you have this scenario in front of you, okay, if you have this scenario in front of you, so in this context or in this scenario context, uh, what can you do? There's one simple command to use. What I can say uh, right now in the dev one branch, okay, normally you do merge in the master branch, right? But it, it is not exactly, but you can think it is like something like a reverse of merge. I can say, uh, I'm, a, I'm in the dev one branch. I'll want to go to master and say, master, you are base of mine from where I started, from where I started. Uh, uh, so maybe you have changed something. We have seen here six is uh, uh, F6, uh, they have changed something. So I want to reload uh, myself. You can think in this way. This called rebase. So this concept, or I can say this use case can be solved by a concept called rebase. And this is one of the use of the rebase uh, concept. So what you will see, uh, this FEC uh, uh, will be uh, added in the history of dev one. So and history will be linear, very straight. You will see after I do uh, rebase. So rebase have done successfully. All the references of my dev one has been updated, and you will see now this part. So so this part has been added in this line. And technically, idea is uh, we have to add this this part. And again, though it's very interesting to know, important to know. Okay, the idea is uh, whatever master added last, right? This one a six. I can't add anywhere. So this is the first thing master added, second thing master added, when from here, my demo started. So what I did, we, we pushed this, uh, uh, you know, commits a little bit one step ahead. And in between, we add this. But obviously, this is what we wanted because master added after the dev one started, right? So I want, it, it, I want, they give you, they have a feel, they have a feel that, uh, it looked like this, that they they created the branch after master edit. So that kind of feel they give you. And finally, you can see is like a one linear history. But but adding in the between, it means uh, it means uh, we have to create a new commits because we can't add anything in between. So that's what they 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 uh, discard all these three older dev one commits and added and create a new one. Okay, so nothing like technically is done by master uh, by by Git. You don't have to worry about, but you know about the orphan branch. So here they also create orphan branch, and we can use garbage collector to clean it. But technically, in my Devon branch, all the data what has been uh, added by the master it uh, come up. Now Devon has get all the data changed by master also. They rebase. And dev one is keep on still working on um, this particular uh, you know, code. Dev one is still working on the code, and uh, and after this they will come back to master and uh, master and you know uh, merge it back the way normally we do. So they quickly go. Let's say their their job is done, and um, we again check out to the master. Master is to have their, their data. So we can do now merge from dev one. Because dev one get the latest data from master, added some more th new things, changes accordingly, and we merge it back. So this is now normal fast forwarding merge and everything is clean. And if you need 
uh, Devon branch to be deleted. You can delete the branch. All the things will be same. Nothing else is uh, different. Okay. And if you want to clean your history, uh, you can use your expire ref log or you can use GC the best collector to clean the orphan one. Okay. So that's what we have discussed in yesterday class. So now it's a very clean street. Okay. And uh, and all, all the things that Devon has changed uh, has changed come to us. What a master add in between also come to us and everything is merged back uh, like a one single history and we push this data uh, to GitHub and uh, to perform the things right. So this is uh, guys uh, one of the use of uh, the rebase as a concept. I won't say it is like a apogee of merge, but the same thing. You can do in master branch also. Somebody changing dev one and master uh, can rebase from the dev one also. This can also be done. So idea is, so if two guys are working together in different branches and you want to get that data back rather than merge, so you still work on that uh, project or in this branch, then you can rebase from that particular branch. That is a whole idea. And, and make the non linear thing means one of the added extra and put in your branch uh, so that you can start working on the on whatever feature added behind the scene. So, so if you have any of these kind of use cases, you can use the uh, rebase. And guys, if you think it's very interesting, small, small requirement change, use case change, we have a different different commands. So understanding the use case and requirement is very, very important. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, using the right commands and right options uh, would be very challenging in the Git. Okay, and this is one small quick command I would like to uh, explain to you, right? Now, uh, let's go for very, very fantastic uh, practical, okay, practical where you guys can also join with me online right now. Uh, what is the idea? Idea is something like this. Okay, it is something like a social coding and maybe I'm inviting socially everyone, let's start code with me. Or maybe it is idea uh, where uh, I start a project and I start inviting everyone over the internet as an open source contributor, right? That I am writing some project, I make my project open source and you guys can start contributing with me. It would be anything. So what is idea, right? So just understand this concept very interesting. And you guys have, to have also have to participate with me. Only thing you require is GitHub account. I believe everybody has the GitHub account. So maybe uh, I, I might start in this way. So from my laptop, I started a project. I want to create some kind of web app or mobile app and something like this. <clears throat> I started a project. And in this project, I start uh, writing the code. And uh, maybe after a certain time, uh, I feel less, let's share this project or upload this project or push this particular project uh, in uh, GitHub. Obviously in the GitHub is some of the repository. Again, my plan is also to, to share this uh, project uh, publicly so everybody can access this, right? Uh, so, uh, let me do this thing. This this thing is you guys know nothing very technical. So after this, what is the plan we have? I will explain you. Let's let's have a setup did here. Okay. This is a, a, a GitHub, and um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a local uh, project. Let's say my open source project. Okay. Or let's say uh, Vimal, uh, maybe Linux world uh, open source project we are working on, right? And in this project, what I'm going to do, uh, let's say I would like to create some kind of code. Uh, let me create a code in cell scripting or we can use any of the language. So let's say uh, my, or maybe first dot sh kind of code I'm writing. In this code, I'm just writing some of the commands. My, my cell is been created. I say echo printing something. Uh, how are you guys? Uh, so pretty simple uh, script I created, like a normal file, okay, over here. And then I'm going to add this file, and I'm just going to comment, commit this, 
right and say uh, commit from local uh, pc or workstation something like this okay that's all and then this is everything is clean everything's clean in my local system now let's say i want to upload this thing in my github let me create a new repository so this is let's say Vimal or uh, maybe linux world project in github okay so this is one repository i created publicly i don't want to initial because early i have the repository in my local system i don't want to create over here just a folder i want to create with this name okay this name so they say if you want to create this just add these two lines in your local system so they guess you can push over to the github so i'm adding this two line what is this line you guys know we have already discussed okay one but and let me add line by line i thought they automatically give a new line character mostly they do okay already added and let me push one bit i think something wrong wrong here get remote remote version okay uh, actually i added a uh, http right in so ssh in my system i have done sssh setup right uh, but even though you can connect with sss https also okay so interesting thing is you don't have to do any sss key setup right if you use https protocol to push and fetch you don't have to you do any kind of uh, key setup you know private key setup we have done right so while pushing first time what they do they ask you your account detail so i'm signing in from my browser right so this is what uh, they ask you for browser okay one minute and then done right so technically in my case i already given the password in my last of some of my my other training or the requirement so thing work for me but in your case <clears throat> in your case uh, when you do first time right so they will give a pop up uh, or maybe they ask you do you want to log in so because i will already log in my github so they will uh, ask you my password you can put your password github account they log in so my point is there is a multiple way to log in ssi already show to you but https is pretty simple you don't have to do any key password or you know private key setup kind of thing here Uh, just when you done this command first time they will ask you uh, give pop up to give to ask the password of your github account so technique has been done and my uh, my uh, data has been uploaded okay now uh, the interesting point here is to note let's say this is the point this is the point my my local project uploaded to github and i want everybody start contributing to my this project so what i will do first of all i will share this link to everyone publicly and i told guys i'm sharing this link to you in your chat message everyone okay enter okay so you get this link of this particular page and guys please if you guys please can very quickly uh, go to this project right just click on this link in your chat message in this zoom meeting just open this page and just try to see uh, can you able to contribute something to me for example try can you open this file maybe yes you might open this file because it's public but see there in the right side in the edit panel okay are you able to edit this file are you able to save this file or commit this file uh, so just try it are you able to do any change in this file why why, why i want you guys can do these changes because i want i share my project open to all like open source and i want everyone uh, contribute to me 
So just check, are you able to do this right or not? So somebody say, no, we, uh, we, uh, we can't, right? You want to do it, right? Because this is my account, right? And I am making my account public. It means everybody can see it. They can clone my, 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 uh, what I say, uh, this entire uh, project locally. You can download locally, you can change, but you can't actually update directly in my account. Obviously, ob uh, there's no good reason as a security perspective, right? So, technically, what I want, I want you guys to contribute. That's my requirement. So, how I, how you guys can contribute, okay? So the way you can contribute over here, okay, this project is, okay, you have to first copy this project in your account, okay? So after I uploaded my uh, project in my GitHub account, let's say this is my account, let's say VD, Vimal Daga account, and uh, my repository name is called Linux World Project GitHub, okay? Linux World Project GitHub, this is my project name, okay? So you can't directly change in my account. This is my personal account. You can't change here. I haven't given this permissions to you. I can give this a different point, but I haven't given this permission to you. But even though I want you contribute. So first of all, what can you do, right? Because you have all also your own personal GitHub account. Let's say somebody here, let's say name Tom. Tom has their own personal GitHub account. So first, what you have to do, you have to first copy this entire project in your GitHub account. Okay, and after you copy in your account in GitHub, then this will be your property. This will be uh, your account. This will be your space. And in this space, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So technically first you have to copy it. And copies, copying one project from anybody in the GitHub, obviously you can only copy those projects are public, right? So my project is public. So uh, after copying this uh, this project in your account, right? So this process, guys, is known as forking. A fork. Okay. So you can fork this project. How pretty simple? As soon as you visit this uh, page in the top, there is option called fork, right? And in this option, if you click this, just you have to click it, and that's all. Uh, your project has been my project has been uh, copied or cloned or directly into your account that's all that's one one step you have to do right now so i just click here and they ask you to do copy or fork i say yes and we can perform right so let me do one thing uh let me find some of the project in github i can show you also github let's say uh, some kubernetes uh, project okay i'm i'm taking some random projects uh, over the internet okay and what i'm doing um, uh, so this is a project created by somebody else. I can't directly change here in this project, right? Uh, I can't directly change, but what can I do? I can make copy this project in my account. So there's option called fork. Okay. I click here. Okay. Fork. And now the project is forking in some few seconds, the entire project is copying to my account. And this will be something like my property. Now, see, guys, now we can see I'm still in my account. But now this project come in my account. We can see from where I fog the different point. Okay. But now in my account, it looked like a new project or a new repository I've created. And because this is my account, so in my account, whatever things I want to change, I can change it. For example, so guys, I'm taking this example just to demonstrate to you what you guys have to do, but you guys have to work in my project only so that I can show you uh, something. So my refresh my screen. Okay, one of one of five guys over here in this training, or not, not everyone, but yeah, uh, these much guys have already forked my this project, right? This this is the total list. So these guys, okay, over here in this training, okay, Abhay or Abhishek or uh, Epsoni or Akhil, these guys are the one from your account has already forked my uh, this project. Means technically copy my project. Okay, that's nice. Now. One or eight guys have done that's nice. Now, what you do now in your my entire projects come to you, come to you. And because in my in my project, uh, I have master branch, so you can see the master branch over there. Okay. And let's say you want to do some changes in this file. Now you can do it. A good practice is don't do directly changes in the master branch. It's good practice is first go and create a new branch here. Okay. So whatever project you have clicked, created in your account. 
over here this is going to create some new branch so maybe you can create a branch name called dev1 or your name or you're saying you're fixing the bug in this script okay something like this and create a new branch here right so this is the next step you should practice right so for example in this script project i want to contribute something so I, what i do first i create my new branch let's say um, adding uh, feature by uh, women right? some kind of branch name i created here i click here and my new branch has been created okay now i'm inside this particular branch okay in this particular branch technically i copy the project from some kubernetes open source guys okay and but it's, this project is now part of my account and in my account i can create anything whatever i want to create so i create a new uh, new branch over here okay let's say dev1 branch okay guys i also blaming you are so guys doing uh, branching in this project what you guys have copied okay and after i get this branch now in this branch whatever change i want to do i can do it okay so i have same thing i'm doing here so in this branch let's say um, let's say i don't like this readme file uh, so i just open this readme file in the same branch and i just go and click edit and edit let's say i want to change this uh, you know kubernetes by with this small change i've done i just make put my name there and there's no good reason to put my name but yeah I put this name. So change some. I change something here, and because this is a readme file, readme file is in the Markdown uh, language. So you can also preview how they look like finally. So my name will come in the bold in the top, or maybe whatever that's in in your in my case, in my case you can open this script and you can add some command here, change something in the commands, or add some hi hello whatever you feel like. And then last I commit. I say. Uh, commit by vd uh, in readme readme file okay we update some bug some kind of great great commit you can write and i'm committing directly into my branch so i commit so technically what are changes you have done in directly in your branch uh, you guys have committed there only but this branch is there in your account so it means your change you have done is is there in your account and everything is there in your account only okay but this project we have forked and copied from other account or other projects so maybe mostly the open source project right so it's been changed now finally uh, something has been changed okay so here technically in this branch you have changed something now why you change this because let's say this is my project let me write my name vimal i started this project and let's say somebody tom here want to join with me and this guy want to contribute with me so if they first copy the project in the account everything they change by the help of branch okay and now uh, what tom will do because tom say now my feature what i want to change has been updated there's some bug we fix this bug everything is working fine so what i want to do i want to uh, send a request to this main account because they are the one who created this project other contributors also joined this projects so i want um, i want uh, this guys to be updated with my feature that i added so i would have to send the request to this guy and say that in my account named tom i had done some changes in this branch so just check have a look because i am the owner vimal is the owner of this real project or main project i can say so tom is sending the request to vimal and say vimal uh, uh, just look into my project and if you feel that the feature is relevant just test it if you feel it is relevant so you can pull the code from mine i can push because i am not the i don't have account i don't have any password of your account so i can push your in your uh, in your account anything but but this is part is also public kind of thing so you can pull and after pull you can add in this particular account okay so uh, that's what we can do so in this case obviously women doesn't know who is who are contributing to us so tom has to 
create a request and this request guys called pull request okay that's what i was trying to explain you so so when you guys hear uh, in my account working all right you can see on the top so for this i can show you this way so i was working in this project let's say you are working in my project in your space in your account and after you after you committed okay there's option called pull request on the top or uh, maybe maybe you can go out in this project over here okay they automatically show you there's something been changed you want to compare and pull request so either you can click here either you can click here okay okay on the pull request okay click here but by the by the meantime guys what i can show you in this project i only have 17 pull requests why because somebody already did right now. otherwise uh, otherwise in my main account right because this the account belongs to me uh, pull request is obviously zero okay but in this account you most of the guys has has uh, already sent this pull request so 17 pull requests guys i got in my account but how you guys can send pull request to me so to, to make you understand so what to do in your account only where you clone my project so this let's say this is a project you have guys cloned so this option called compare and and pull request option right out of come up or maybe you can click here also when you click this and this time this time they automatically guys this options to you what option they give to you uh, this is your account name so you guys here they will show you your account name then the project that you clone that project name they give you here okay and then they they give you a, your branch name which branch you have added extra like that one branch in your case so they give you your account name your branch name right so they give you and what of change you have done here in your branch you want to send you see, see this arrow you want to send back to the master branch of the main repositories right main means the Vimal account so here guys they are showing you here my account name okay something like they're showing you here is Vimal 13 slash something you know this name they're giving you Vimal 13 l level project github right of my branch it means you are sending the request that something change in my account I want to uh, merge this guy. Can it is something like a merge? I want to merge this guy into master branch of this report. Okay, so I want to uh, do this changes. Okay, so you are sending the request only for you can't do you have you don't have any ownership on this account, but you can send the request to that guy. Okay, and uh, just create a pull request. Okay. Just create a pull request so i just click here and some more thing you can do even though you can see here also before send you can see this guy has this data this part here changed so there's a diff kind of tools are showing you the difference what changes is happening right obviously done by you so but from here you can see this guy where you're sending have this is the data they have but this is part you have changed so you can see that difference also come up right so do you want to uh, uh pull get a pull request i say yes so my pull request okay by me to go to this account and this account number of requests has been updated and changed okay now somebody and this is the history right a lot of guys has up, uh, sent this so you can see the history also as soon as pull request come up automatically lend it to that main account maybe in your case you lend it to my account and in my account you can see all the pull requests send by all the account there's some somebody from this account does uh, then the pull request by by this comment so we can see everything here all right so all the pull requests by all the accounts in this main account you can see here what they're doing and other things also this is one thing now let's back come to my account. So I believe uh, I got multiple pull requests. Let me refresh this page. Okay. So nice. Uh, One twenty three guys has fogged this. Not happy. A lot of guys is still waiting. I don't know why, but one two three guys has uh, copied this data and sixty one pull requests I got at this point in time. So now this is my uh, practice for in my account i am the owner of my account i started this project so it up to me uh, to to check the pull request 
and pull request. Uh, by the way, guys, there's one more option uh, called issue here. What are issues we'll discuss in some time, but if I quickly click on the issues, okay. So somebody has opened the issue in this account and uh, by Himanshu something with the test, what I mean by this, we'll discuss, right? But either I have a pull request also, we can create the issues also, right? What are issues we'll discuss. But this pull request, 68 pull request I have, again, these are the details we have, okay? So, um, uh, so what I can see here in the pull request, somebody from Abhishek seven four two one uh, account. Here is the details of this guy from uh, Gujarat. Hello, Abhishek, and uh, he said nothing. So there's a comment this guy has uh, done. So somebody say added eco command. And somebody say by Venkata, uh, something like this. So these these are the lot of uh, pull requests I have in my account. I'll go through and there's some things or maybe some of the pull requests uh, uh, you guys have done great changes in my account or my code and I feel that should be part of my account. So what I do, for example, let me pick this added one, right? From uh, Sobra uh, Gupta, right? So I click here. Okay, so I can see very clearly what these guys has uh, done so as as per this guy he they write the comment added eco command before date and the calc command so this is what this guy has written in this code okay and uh, what we can also see in this uh, guys what other guys have done uh, i can see what file they change so i can very quick clearly see this guy has updated these two lines with the, this two new lines. Okay, so I can compare how I feel now, uh, this is uh, good to go. I want to merge into my main account. Even I can see how much time these guys have done the comments. Okay, so this guy in their branch, right, where your sub branch has uh, committed only once. So if you feel okay, you can, uh, you can accept, uh, accept this uh, particular, you know, uh, merge, right? Technically, what this guy had done, I would like to merge into my account, okay? So for merging, again, you can merge the way you normally merge, right? Merge pull request, or maybe you can do uh, squashing also. Maybe this guy has done a lot of comments, comments, so I don't want to interest in all hundreds of comments because it makes my master history very bigger. So I can first, squash it and then merge what is squashing i already explained you in my last class okay so what do we want to do you can do even though you can do rebasing also this option also available here okay why rebasing you guys um, you know so this also you can do directly from here so let me do a normal merge so i'll just click on the merge request okay you want to confirm merge let's say i want to have this merge confirmed Okay, we can do a revert also if you want to re roll big, roll big, uh, roll back kind of thing. You can also do, but yeah, technically, whatever this guy Subra has uh, uh, contributed with me uh, from the sub branch, I merge into a my master branch, right? After having all the verification, other checks also. Maybe you can do testing also. You can put this. A data in some kind of Jenkins tool that tests the code if it is fitting in your environment. Uh, tons of things we have to do technically. Here I've done very quickly merge, or maybe I can also send to as a reviewer. I can attach some of my reviewer name right to so some of my team name. They will review the code, and some more things we can do here. But I've just done very quickly this part. Okay, and finally. Finally, out of this 77 or something numbers, right, I, uh, you know, merge. So even though from here also, you can see me, my account has merged some pull request number 71 from this account one minute ago. Okay, it means what this guy has done is come to my master account. Okay, and if I click here, so this is the things this guy had done. And there's two contributor, one is me and one is this guy. But this also contributor. Why is per contributor? Because I get the data from this guy. So there's two contributor of this one. Or maybe let me very quickly check. Somebody also updated this file from Mahe of uh, this one. 
so this guy had done some changes uh, but i can't uh, i can't merge this because by, uh, because because this what are guys this guy change has a merged conflict so if i try to uh, if i try to get the data from this guy uh, it will there is a conflict come up so i can't get the data directly the way i take from the last guy okay so what this lines means let me first take this topic very quickly then i come back to this point and i show you how to resolve the conflict directly in the github so point is this is the first time contributor with me this is one thing but what are this guy has done maybe absolutely right but we have some merge conflict so i can't merge directly here even though there's no option of merging come up here before the merging we do some resolve conflicts and uh, what is resolve conflict let me explain to you so i'm just holding this topic right now okay i'll just come back to my screen and explain you what is merge conflict right so idea is very simple idea very simple for example there's two guys working in one uh, code or one project maybe okay let's say somebody named vimal is working in some code and at the same time tom is one working in a code so there is one program file let's say f1.txt is a program file okay and in this program file let's say vimal has added one line okay in the code vimal added one line let's say first um, line that vimal added second line or second line in the code okay uh now let's say i save this file okay at the same time where i save this file same location tom or pick this file from open this file so tom again will have the same file access okay uh, now now what is happening here right let's say uh, uh, let's say uh, vimal is still also working in this in this uh, this uh, area and what vimal has done uh, maybe this lines of code what have we seen uh, we saved uh, initially Okay, we will have changed something here. Maybe instead of first line, there this guy write the women lines. But same time, Tom is also working same file, and instead of first line, they change that this is uh, first line, first line, and second line is still the same. So my point here is, my point here is, if you guys are working in a single file, here in this case called file one dot uh, txt, okay somebody at at one specific line okay line number 1 change something at the same time some other developer or in our case in some other branch right there's a better word to say also also done some change in the same line now point here is let's say this is a vimal different user you can think as a git perspective is a different branch right and tom is a different user you can think in in the git prospect is a different branch both the branch or both the guys working same single file okay and our point here is uh, point here is vimal change on the line number 1 tom also change the line number 1 now point here is which will i pick which one i will pick for example let's say this guy also want to save this file here this guy also want to save this file here okay so or let's say they are saving at the same point in time otherwise after if somebody save afterwards normally in the hard disk the file overwrite but let's say to understanding they both the guys are trying to save at the same point in time so which align my my uh, operating system will pick okay so i pick this line or should i pick this line only one line we can pick at one point in time because both is changed at the line number 1 line number 2 is same there's no challenge here line number 3 may be same there's no challenge here but in both the files single file they change by both the guys in their space they're trying to save both the files same point in time so which line i pick okay obviously there's a there's a concept called conflict come up right so we can say there's a conflict in line number 1 and uh, we don't know i am the operating system how i know which line to pick because this is your data you should know which line you want to pick finally okay so what happened at the time of saving uh, somebody from your team a vimal and tom or they should sit together as a team and they decide okay which line should work better in our scenario maybe one line of one or line of two or maybe 
I mean, both the line doesn't work together. They might uh, have more changes here in some of the code or future plans. So they might uh, found, let's do one thing, don't use this, don't use this, let's use some other thing, let's say uh, first line, this kind of text. Okay, so they come up with the one, uh, one uh, conclusion. Okay, let's go and put this line. That's conclusion called resolve. So they come with one final resolve uh, or resolution that this is the let's let's pick this is the last or best code or best data for line number one, and then uh, let's let's finally store this data in the file. So technically. This is a very common scenario, uh, right? It normally happen when multiple guys work together or normally happen with multiple branches. In one branch, somebody change something, other branch, somebody change something. And when you try to save together, merge together, that's we say merge, okay? If particular lines, both the branches are different. So while merging, you will face the issue called merge conflict, okay? And we have to resolve it and normally, Resolve is done by manual method because obviously automation is done by computers and how your computer know what file line you want to pick. Okay, so merge, you can't do automated as such. Maybe some kind of AI script you can write that is, that is not foolproof, obviously. Uh, so typically merge is normally happen mostly manual. Okay, there might be some kind of graphical tool is there to help you very quickly to guide you at this different point. But resolve uh, when any conflict come up while merging, right? You have to resolve it mostly manual. Okay, let me create the scenario over here uh, in my local system to make you understand, right? So this is the current uh, data we have, and uh, to make you understand this thing, right? What I'm going to do uh, in my current uh, branch uh, here uh, this is the my final data that i have uh, right now okay let even though let me go for different branch right because i want to, might use this branch for next for the next purpose right but let's let's continue with this nothing maybe nothing you know, it will save our time right so uh, so let's say this is the data we have and uh, what i'm going to do uh, i am going to create a new branch that's a dev one okay and this is this is, a, this is the project number l o s p uh, let me load this project so this is the current status okay so these new brands are created and what this guy has done uh, in this file if this guy has added some new line in the last for example uh, maybe ls command or ls or l command right in bus script so there's no conflict here okay why is not conflict because according to master or different user we have three lines according to this guy they added one more new line in the last okay so it means let me first commit this part commit this but d1 okay so now uh because extra line we added Okay, so all the three lines that we had previously, we're not editing anything, right? We are adding some new extra line. Okay, and that line master doesn't has. So in this case, if you go to master, master, all right, and uh, say uh, master, I want to merge from my dev one branch. So you see, guys, there's no issue come up. Everything is very quickly merged. Okay, and master get the latest updated uh, data. This is what the practical we have seen multiple times already. Okay, but if I do something like this, I can go to my dev one branch. Okay, instead, what dev one is doing, they will open this file that's called first.sh. And here, let's say they say I want to do some change in this line instead of cal, I want to add 2015. Okay, this is what I want to change. So, according to developer, this guy has changed line number two okay but according to master okay they have a different line at the line number two now in this case you are updated some line that is already exist okay so in the master branch they have this line 
uh, uh, with a different data in your dev branch, you have the same line number two with a different data, different code, different kind of, uh, you know, customized edit you have done in the code. In this case, what happened? Let me first commit this. Obviously, you have to commit from D2 branch. And now, if I go back to my master branch, check out master branch, right? Uh, master branch. Now, obviously, master branch have not have not updated this data because we haven't merged yet. But this time, this time, if you want to merge to the dev one uh, branch. So what you might see, okay, even though guys, there's no challenge here, they updated this data, okay, with this one, okay, why they updated, there's no challenge come up, because, uh, because dev one has changed line number two, and master have not, uh, not updated anything, right, it's, they already have the older commits, what I mean by this, let me get one more scenario that makes more sense, okay, so what I'm going to do, again, let me go to my dev one branch, Okay, dev one branch. Uh, sorry, dev one branch, and uh, in this dev one branch, I am again updating this file. Okay, let me change this time. Uh, maybe let's say let me change this line. How are you by dev one? So this is what dev one change. Okay, and let me come again creating the same scenario. The small change I will do here in a minute. I uh, let me come in from dev one, come back to my master, check out master. Okay, uh, maybe this point in time, dev one has changed something. Same time in this branch, okay, somebody also changed something. That's what the senior would be. Okay, somebody also changed something in this branch. Okay, that is not known by dev one. Last time this is known by dev one because the cal command is known by dev one. Okay, but at the same point in time, somebody changed the same line. Maybe you guys get from other branch also, somebody working on this, this project on the real time on the working area. Let's say by master um, real time changes I am doing here, something like this. Okay, so same line. Okay, dev one changed something. But in my master branch, we want to find a merge, merge somebody also get from other branch. This data or master is getting or you know working in this uh, file directory. You can see the status. So master is working in this file directory. Now, if this kind of scenario you have in this case of Git, and now if you try to merge from the dev one, okay. So what happened? Dev one say at this line I have a different data. Uh, that I don't know because I haven't copied yet from your history. I don't know what data you have. A master's have a very different data come from different branch from where I merge or somebody is working live in my branch, any kind of scenarios. So in any of these kind of scenarios, if you try to merge and this line is different, what you have in your working area, you will face this issue. Okay, so you will face this issue over here. So they say there's some issues of merge and something happened here, okay? So this kind of issue gonna come up even though I haven't properly create this challenge here, um, maybe better way we can do it. Uh, even though if I do commit also in my master before, that will make more better clarity, right? So master change in the working area, they, they've also put in my, in my, in the in the committee if you see here master has a different data dev one is different this is the data of the dev one or this is the commit from the master okay and both the guys is committed in the same file this is one thing and both the guys has committed a save line this or same thing so technically this is, technically this guy say my commitment data is different on line number three this guy say my commitment data on line number three is different so in this case, if I again do merge, that will give a better uh, error that I am. I think I'm looking for. Now this is what I wanted to show you. So in this case, they want to do merging automatically. Tilted guys, what are merging we have seen recursive, ORT, or uh, maybe 
fast forward they done automatically okay but this time they are trying to do automatic merging but they find uh, no it is a conflict on the content okay in this file they might multiple files also but in this file we have merged is conflict so if you want to um, really want to commit or you really want to merge right you have to fix the conflict then you can commit the results and right, this is the maybe first time in this training you might see this kind of line here we normally always in the branch but you are in the very different kind of branch okay where it says that you are in the master branch but you are stuck into that sub you know in between right of merge conflict so when to do something in this branch you first resolve this conflict even though if you are in the get status command get status command they they show you uh, over here that uh, in this branch okay there is something uh, path means there is a different different path we have is not un, is not merged because of the merge issues okay now it's up to you do you want to resolve this merging or do you want to abort okay let's say i don't want to resolve this merging because maybe uh, the two teams who are working together they are not here so i can't take a decision what i want to do uh, uh, finally so i want to work until in my uh, in my branch on some other other code other file so right now what can you do you can use this command let's say i don't i want to abort this uh, merging right so i paste and this abort now you become a norm come in normal branch nothing changed nothing committed okay you haven't merged from the developer you still you are data you have from the master only think it's not merged at least for some time you abort this merging uh, challenge here so it's still working on this project but obviously finally we have to merge right that's that's the main point right so if you want to merge uh, what you can do here again if you do merge right again same conflict come up again stick in this merging kind of uh, intermediate state okay uh, so how to merge so it's so simple nothing very technical right so you know merge idea is something like this so these two guys work together and they'll see which line we have issue of of uh, merging you can see the differences here all right or if you open the file also with your favorite text editor either notepad or you know something like this i'm using vi text editor and to open this file where you're facing the issue of conflicts so what they show you in this state of merging state they update this file okay your main file and what they show you here is is something like this okay so what they show you line number 1 and 2 nothing changed line of 4 nothing changed but from here this arrow say from here till this arrow we have some conflict what conflict do we have wherever you are right now had right now in the master so in the master master says line number 3 should be this one okay and some in some split in between then dev one say the line should be this one which one to use we don't know so you now my team work together uh, and let's say we finally conclude let's uh, not go for master let's not, not go for dev one let's create new new data okay maybe something like this i say this is hello how you buy master and dev some new data i've come up with or some new code i would i come up with so do some changes and then remove all this line i don't want this i don't want this that's all. okay open your normal text editor any visual studio code whatever you have this line come up some text editor give you very kind of beautiful visuals so we can directly pick and drop and cut and paste you know there's a different point but this is what the when merge come up then conflict come up i can say then this kind of data look like this remove unwanted lines and what a final code you want to use this keep this code with you save the file after save the file is still you on the merging state but now you are pretty sure if you see the status the normally this uv means you are on the merging conflicts uh, so uh, so but you have changed in the file and you are pretty sure that is this is what uh, you wanted okay so what can you do you can finally commit this even though if you see the status also you are still in the merge conflict if you think the conflict is fixed you can get do the git commit
So here, guys, you can do the git commit. Give me some comment and say merge uh, conflict conflict resolve dot dot dot. And you don't have to use dot here. Okay, so without dot, you can directly use the commit command. Obviously, with like some comments. Okay, that's all. So uh, commit is not possible because you have unmerged file. Unmerged file has been unmerged file. I think we have to add the file first. It should so add it. Let me add the file uh, first dot assets and then this right. So to add the file right first while they're asking to add maybe technically add means you guys know where to put the file in the staging area that's what they're talking about so i put the file in my staging area okay it's just we can track what's what something changed and finally we commit now you come back to your master state so very simple but the only challenge in the merge is the way i explained to you we don't know what to finally use as a code right so my team worked together sit together and come up with a final solution what we want to use finally depend upon my further plans and for what is going on in this project right now everything is clean okay everything is clean right uh, in my local uh, branch this is one thing and finally we have this final data of what i merge okay so even though this also looks clean so now data from the dev one has been merged to the master okay same thing is happening in the uh, in this part okay somebody uh, mahe uh, 500 is trying to uh, you know add something in this file but because i already merged from somebody uh, other guys okay uh, right now in my account so so what I change, so I, I, I'm one uh, commit ahead in my master branch and this guy is also changed in something in this, in this, in this branch by my uh, right, or my maybe. So, uh, so that's what the guys resolve conflict gonna come up, right? So wherever these guys want to, uh, you know, merge, this is my account master branch and their branch is a different branch. So this guy has one commit, my account also one commit ahead from where this guy started. So the same kind of scenario with what I show you locally. So this is the reason why they face uh, merge conflict. You want to can see the file change also. Okay, so this guy wanted to change something on the line number one. And in my line one, one I had different data altogether. Okay, this is also one of the reason why we have the merge conflicts. Okay, so you can see here, okay, what change you want to do if you think you want to proceed with this data. So what can you do? You can first, we can do merge, but before the merge, you have to first resolve the conflict. Means which line you want to pick finally first line. The first line would be your date command. In your case, you want to take the first line would be the comment of this guy, what you want to keep. Okay, the first line. You can resolve the conflict here, click here. And they open this kind of beautiful look and feel uh, to tell you what you want to do, something like this. So you want to keep the data, this one, okay, from uh, this guy, or you want to keep the data that I already have in my current master branch, which one to keep. So let's say I want to keep the message from this guy as a comment. Plus, I want to keep this some other data that's given by my some other contributors. So this is the final data I want to keep. So whatever the code you want to finally use, just use it. Okay. Okay. So this is the final code I want to keep with my uh, myself. And finally, click on mark as resolve. That's all. After resolve, now you're ready to go for commit merge. You want to commit? I say yes. I understand I want to commit into master system and now they're committing. So resolve solve and your commit also done by this guy. Okay. And now finally you can pull the data. So now what are the things I want this guy want to change? I resolve that issues. The same thing, you know, I show you the, you know, locally I, I done the commit, right? So I finally committed. First I open the file, 
edit the code, then finally I committed. I would like to keep this data. And finally, you can pull this request and confirm merging. So uh, this time uh, the merge has been done successfully from this guy Mahi uh, into my account. So if you go to my account, okay. And now in this data last merge done by Mahi uh, and this from the pull request, right? One minute ago. And now we see the latest data uh, come to me. And this guy, how um, we can have get contributors. Now we have three contributors in this projects. In this project, I can say uh, where I'm accepting that code or my data, or plus while merging any conflicts come up, we can we can connect or uh, maybe my team. Uh, who is working in this project, they can check the decision accordingly, according to my project, what things will work, what change I want to do in the functions, variables, we'll go and uh, check this and finally perform it. So, so that, that's, that is an idea about, um, you know, how we can do, solve the conflicts, okay, and other things also. There are a lot of uh, graphical tools also, guys, for the conflicts available in the market. Uh, for example, I might have with me, I'll show you very quickly, a lot of graphical tools also available uh, that you can solve locally in a system to uh, quickly solve the merge conflicts. Uh, so uh, I think I have my message, I'll show you if I have. Uh, so what I'm going, going to do, I'm doing the same thing. I'll first go to my uh, dev branch to, to create some more conflicts. Dev one, I open this file. Okay, and in this file, I again do some changes in this line. Okay, and then I commit D three. Then I get saved back to my master over here, and again I do some changes for my master. Maybe in the same line by master. Okay, and again, do commit here by the master. So both the guys are one commit ahead, change the same file, mostly the same line also. So obviously there's a full chances of having the, uh, the merge conflict. So if I do a merge from the dev one branch, I'm in the master branch. If I do the merge, then conflict come up and we'll fix it. Simple way to fix it is to open the file and do some line changes. What you want to keep, fix it. Or no, most of the projects are very big. Lots of lines will change. So by looking at the code by normal text editor is very harder. So a lot of graphical tool available. Okay. Even to those who know Visual Studio Code also, so they have some kind of uh, plugins available in the Visual Studio Code as an IDE. They will open this both the files together, right? And they show you highlight, they highlight you uh, for you which line we have the conflicts and they give options to add and remove directly by clicking on the buttons, right? So a lot of, otherwise a lot of ID support the merge conflict issues depending upon which ID you want to use or there's third, some third party tool available. I think I have the tool available. So to calling this tool, there's a command called merge tool. Okay, so whenever guys you come in the merging state, and this command will work and in your laptop if you have any uh, tool available that is help you to do uh, help you in the merge conflicts so that tool will launch in my case i had i believe i am not pretty sure so they are calling the tool and say uh, we have some conflict in this file yeah i had this tool so this kind of this again very pretty powerful tool uh, in the market from the pre force right and they open um, this tool, okay? So how to install this tool and how to set this tool here, I'll show you in a minute very quickly, but let me show you this tool uh, about this tool. So they say, okay, uh, they say uh, current data you had in your local system was this one, okay? Uh, somebody, sorry, this one in the middle one. Okay, somebody from the remote branch and for you right now, the remote branch is dev have changed this line. Okay, 
And right now, uh, your local branch where you are right now is master branch, they change this one. And if you have one conflict, because this guy has a different commit, this guy different commit, based from where we started has a different commit. So we have a conflict, okay, here, we, we know this, so you, this beautiful diagram also, so base left and right. So we have one commit here, and this describe this commit also in the bottom of this bar, okay? So this is the three lines we have, uh, which one you want to use. So by looking at this kind of simple look and feel visuals, uh, maybe let's say I want to, uh, I don't want to keep this line. Oh, I sorry, I want to keep this line. Or maybe I want to keep this line or this line. So whichever the line you want to keep, you can uh, select. So let's say I want to keep the line, this one, the, this this uh, green one. So there's a one in the bottom right, there's a one uh, selection bar. You can select, you can remove all the things you can do, right? Plus edit something, you want to add new uh, data by perforce is just tool name. This is one of the tools, otherwise that robot tool available in the market. This give a, this kind of look and feel for merge. And this tool also used for difference also, you know, then uh, if you want to see the difference between two versions and two branches and two different commit IDs, this tool also you can use for seeing the difference in this kind of graphical way. After this, save this file, or maybe from here, I'll save this file, one minute, right? So file, and you can save, it's been saved, I already have done control S, right? Save this file and, and close. Yeah. That's all <clears throat> merge, uh, merge uh, has been done. If you open this file, so now this is the line we have added by the perforce as a tool and they done the merge. And finally, you can do get commit, okay, on this data. So now Mars has been done and conflict has been resolved. Okay, so like this, there's a lot more tool available, but uh, Puffer is again, very famous tool in merging area. Okay, so how to install Puffer so simple. You can just search for Puffer download. Okay, uh, the software actual name is P4V, is a software name. P4V is a software name. This is one website where you can download uh, this, tool from the Perforce, okay? This merge tool, right? You can download. So you can select uh, which which OS you want to install the software for, Windows 64, and my kind of version of Windows, let's say I want which kind of software, MSI or EXE, executable, I just say click MS, uh, EXE, maybe all. MSI, click download, that's all. After download, just, just have the quick registration or skip the registration, right? Pretty simple, you guys can do it. The software downloaded, double click, install it, that's all. Okay, and that's all. Only thing is, it's a different tool altogether, get a different command altogether, we have to uh, integrate both the tools, okay? Integrate both the tools. How to integrate? And there, uh, just go to your git command prompt. And in the git, you guys know in, the, in my initial class, I talk about config a little bit. Okay. And there's option called global config. And we have to create one list of the global config. You know, the list where I show you, you can set our email address and name. Okay. So we add some more on for option here. The option would be something like this. Okay. Any conflict come up whenever we call for merge tool, you know, merge command call P4 merge this software. And where the software installed, the software installed in this particular uh, directory. So when you install the software, they install in particular directory. I don't want to install right now. You can double click and install it, pretty simple. But in my case, the software installed in C program file per force. So technically in C, C program file. And per force. So we have this software where we have this program, P4 Smarts. Same program actually I launched here. Yeah. So you can give the file name, which file you want to see the difference also, Mars. You can also tackle good give here. 
So this path I have given here. Okay. And because this tool we can use for difference also to see the difference in two files and two versions and to commit ID. So we can use this tool for differential also. So whenever you want to find any differential, right? So example, I'll show you how to set how, how I set this. Uh, so for example, we have logs one line. Okay, I want to see the difference, right? You guys know the command get diff to see the difference between uh, this commit and this commit, for example. So you can see the difference, right? In this commit, one line we added, one line we remove, or something like this, right? So same thing you can do. This is the kind of black screen, but same thing you can do with diff tool also. So what a diff tool you have set up? Anything, perforce or other tools also available. Uh, uh, is set up that tool will open and they show you the difference between these two versions and those two commits here. This kind of tools open and perforce, and they see that in that that time at that point in time, these are two differences we have. Okay, some kind of look like looking for other things also you can do. That's what you can try and see by yourself. Okay, you can do. Only thing is one time setup you have to do and how we can do the setup. So after install Perforce, download this software here, double click, install it. Wherever they install, you know the path or while installing also, you can change the path also where the software has been going to be installed. Okay, take this path where the software is installed, take the program name P4 merge, and what to do, nothing special. Just run this command, get config E, add it. Run this command. Okay. And in this command, uh, you have to just type, open the, of this file, open, you have to just type this lines. This line. I'll share this data to you, but technically, what they're talking about, whenever any merge happen, which tool to use, okay, P4 merge, and the detail of the P4 merge of this tool is whatever name I write here, the detail of this name is this one. So this is the program file we have to call. Okay. And uh, for diff, which tool to use is just a name, but detail of this name, this name is this part. So this is a program we have to use. Okay. Now, instead of this, any other merging tool you want to use, you can give the name and the path of this tool. Or maybe it's more, most of the ID also support, they can give you ID name also like Visual Studio Code. For this, you have to install some plugins on the Visual Studio Code or other ID, that's a different point. But this is what, you, and this is how you can uh, create this. So I'll share this code to you. Okay, so if you want to try, but this is how it works. So I'll share this code to you in your respective area, or let me also put this code in your Google Drive, today's class, right? So this is how, uh, uh, how it will work, right? So it is up to you, you want to use a local file uh, to, uh, to merge, okay? Or uh, you can use kind of some kind of perforce tool or something like this to, um, the good thing is these kind of tools, they create a backup copy also, something goes wrong. So they create a backup copy also, like ORG file, there's a different point. Okay. But they will also help you to merge very quickly. Okay. This is a, a one more a concept I want to tell you. So uh, now it is your choice. Merge config, you guys got the idea. Okay. And uh, even though if you do rebasing also, you will face the merge conflict. Same way you can solve the mark config in the rebase also. What is rebase? I told you. Okay. So same way uh, you can uh, resolve the merge conflict in the rebase. Okay. So that's the one idea.